thanks for letting us uh, uh, talk with you. We appreciate it very much. Why don't we start by getting to know you a little bit more? Uh, tell us about your background and how you got into the insurance business. Awesome. So, um, first of all, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Gene. Thank you for welcoming me here, David. Um, so, just uh, coming from a humble background from the Philippines, moved here back in 2003, um, started working okay, in a restaurant industry with my dad. I did that for about 10 years, um, so until I was 27 years old. Okay, so um, to make the story short, I was just really feeling really bad and overwhelmed about where was I at my life that time. You know, working in a restaurant industry was, you know, it's not that easy, right? It can be pretty hectic, long hours, no time off, right? Not a lot of benefits and stuff like that, plus terrible bosses. So I thought to myself, hey, um, I think there's something more out of life. So I tried doing other um, businesses. That's when I started doing my entrepreneurship world. I did forex trading. Uh, I tried for a couple of months, it didn't work out. Um, I tried to get my real estate license. I just didn't feel like I was aligned to you know people selling houses and stuff because I wasn't a homeowner myself. Um, I did Amazon for maybe uh, three weeks. <laughs> it wasn't my cup of tea. Until I got introduced um, to World Financial Group, World System Builder, by my mom, actually. And that's how I started my journey in the in insurance industry. And with that being said, um, it just like kind of like opened up my eyes to a new world. I didn't even know that life insurance is such a big, you know, just a giant industry where someone like me with no knowledge, background, and know nothing, nothing about finance can be somebody, you know, like at least learn something new and be my own boss, basically. So um, I've been in the business for about, let's say, four years now, about half a decade. Um, I think I started almost before near 2019. Towards the, towards the end of 2018. And I'm still learning. Um, I'm still growing every day. I get to meet like-minded people like you guys. Um, so now to talk about how did I get started with Duford, if you want me to answer that. Yeah, you yeah, me? because you were with WFG for a while. And I know you're, yeah, yeah. you're Tim's your brother, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah we had Tim, Tim on brother. another one of these calls a couple of weeks ago. Some of you may remember. And, um, but y'all made a transition out of WFG. Can you explain what that was and why? Oh, okay. So Tim, um, actually the one that transitioned to B, uh, BIG, I'm still affiliated with World Financial Group. Actually, that's still my full time. Um, but when uh, around, I think December, uh, I see him like studying new things, right? Like doing some research. I'm like, wow, this guy is on some level, right? He's focused. Yeah. So, when he talked to me about the world of final expenses, you know, hey, hey, bro, um, just try to like take a look at it. You know, um, you know, if we're going to talk about finance with other people, might as well have different types of, you know, solutions to solve, right? Not just an IUL or annuities or, you know, college funds. So I took a look at it. Well, how I started um, maybe around New Year, I started, uh, I, I started studying um, the, the final expense face-to-face because -face, I love I love face-to-face. -face. I love to talk to people in, front, uh, in person. Um, it took me about a week and a half or two weeks, okay? Um, I tried it out, uh, talked to my old client, and I was able to sell uh, my first <laughs> family benefit life, right? Uh, uh, yeah, no, actually prosperity, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, and it was a success. I told Tim, I was like, yo, bro, I'm happy this mm -hmm. actually works. He said, nah, that doesn't count. You know, you already know the person. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, all right, you're kind of right about that. So I bought my first leads, I believe, January 15th. And then um, I got my very first sale on January 17th. Okay. First, um, actually first real client, right? Um, I got another sale the next day um, on the 18th. But the, but the very next day of that, he canceled on me. To cancel the policy, but during that same day around um, January 19th, I got another policy. Uh, funny story, just to make it short, 
um, I closed the client, okay? Um, I think it was a uh, 8,000 AP, right, points. And towards the end of our meeting, I saw a, fa uh, I saw a policy, uh, family benefit on her table. I was like, wait, well, how come I just saw this right now? And when I saw it, I saw Tim's name. <laughs> Your brother. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it was like, what, 3,000 AP? I'm like, man, I, re I replaced it. I replaced it. I was like, I called Tim. You know, Tim called me. He was like, Tim called me. He was like, hey, bro, you better not replace it. That's yeah. my client. <laughs> That's funny. So I, told, I, I, told, I told the lady, um, yeah, I'm just going to cancel it. So, well, um, two weeks, uh, I didn't really get any results. That was around um, first day of Jan uh, February. So, you know, I think for human nature, it's kind of okay. I think it's okay to be a little bit rational and kind of have like doubts and skeptical, you know, because, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with another company and now I feel like I'm working with another company. Is this right? I have to ask myself questions like, well, what am I doing, right? Um, does this really work? Am I getting distracted? So I kind of just like set aside and we didn't really do much. Um, for the for, for the next two weeks, um, I didn't buy leads. Um, I just used like aged leads, um, and I play around with it, you know, for two weeks. And well, guess what? I didn't make any sale from aged leads, <laughs> right? Because I don't think it works, right? And that's when I told myself, hey, you know what? You know it works because you did awesome policies um just give it again some try and actually learn how to manage your time um you know it like actually try to put some metrics on and knock on doors and set up appointments as much as you can so so let's pause that. right there i, I want to go back a little bit here you hit on a bunch of things that i think are really interesting most most of the audience watching gene today and probably later on youtube are newer to the business um WFG versus what we do at DIG. Can you kind of give us an explanation of what the differences are? Uh, because some agents may be better at WFG, some may, may be better at DIG. Uh, where do you think, what do you think the biggest difference are and who would be more appropriate in one direction or the other? Okay, um, let's start with WFG, right? Um, WFG, I think uh, it's more focused on really recruiting. Um, it's more focused on building. Um, uh, it has a lot of trainings about how to uh, build, which I, I love about it because I, I, I feel more like uh, I'm a long-term person. Um, there's a lot of meetings happening, um, events and stuff like that as well. Uh, so it's really good. There's a lot of room to grow. Um, and yeah, there's, there's different types of um, solutions you can provide and trainings for that as well, uh, product knowledge. But the cons, and this is where I think for the new people in the industry where they kind of really have to listen and pay attention. Um, the cons when it comes to WFG is that if you don't have an experience and you don't have like the proper training from your upline, especially if your upline is just new to the business as well, <laughs> don't have any experience in the industry, you're basically after, you know, you're messed up. Like, you know, um, you can do your best and kind of do it your own way which kind of how I did, because I know I feel like if I, I'm not blaming on anybody, I'm not you know, pointing fingers out there. I think we should all be responsible for our own actions and for our own business, because we are all our own business owners here. But I feel like if I really had the courage to ask more questions and really put, me, put, more, put more effort into work and ask the leaders, I would have been in a different place, you know? But um, like I said, if you're new in the industry um, and, you're not comfortable at talking to, you know, um, your warm market, which is your families and friends, um, even worse, <laughs> cold market, you're basically fried. Um, well, now, when it comes to sales, uh, WFG, well, you can get a lot of training only if you are in front of the people, right? And who, most of the time when you're in front of the people, the most majority of the people you're going to talk to are the people you know. Um, and it could be a little bit overwhelming and intimidating because, you know, you're selling to your mom, you're selling to your dad, um, your aunties, your auntie, which is a doctor, and, you know, <laughs> they're looking down on you. What are you trying to do? You're giving me financial advice now, right? Um, that's basically it. But like I said, um, everything takes time. 
right? Just like a seed, you know, it how, takes time. For how would you, how would you compare what WFG does to what we do? What, what is different about the DIG experience? Well, um, for DIG experience, okay, uh, I would say the the there's a there's there's a system for both, right? There's a wonderful system for both worlds for both companies. Um, I think hands down for sales training, I would say uh, DIG. Uh, if you really want to be, if you're more like a person who just want to sell or um, kind of like you 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 want to do things on your own um, and you don't want anybody too much to kind of like guide you or stuff like that. If you're more like self-sufficient um, and you don't have a problem studying, um, learning on yourself, um, you have every modules out there. I think it, there's no way you're not going to learn here. Um, I think you have everything you need um, and just the classroom itself, right? Uh, it's better than college, guys. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the college of final expense, I think, was what we yeah, could Like, hey, man, David, it only took me a uh, uh, week and a half to actually drill, uh, you know, every like everything that you mentioned over there, um, like the script. Um, so to not, um, you know, so, so, so to not get distracted, I would say the sales training is good. You have the meetings, you, know, you can ask questions, you know, and all of that. Uh, plus, you have all the scripts and the resources, everything in that classroom, right? So I think it's a beautiful thing for someone who's just getting inside the field to learn. Because, okay, I don't, okay, here's the thing, David. I don't think everybody has the courage to ask questions, you know. And sure. Like, some people are really shy or introvert. They don't want to, they're afraid of, like, um, asking the wrong questions. So some people are just very introvert type or they just want to learn by themselves i think that's perfectly fine but either way if you are, are like me who wants to ask questions it's a good it's a good place to start as well I'd, I'd add this in too one of the things that we have done differently since the start of the year is implement this mentorship program where 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 gene really came through right before it all started but the big emphasis we have at deford insurance group is sales training focusing on the agent, focusing on them selling as opposed to recruiting. And we've 10 times our effort on an individual basis for every agent that comes in to provide them one-on-one -on -one mentorship on the script, on the sales process, which leads to buy, where, how to get prepared, how to understand the carriers. That's been a game changer with us. Um, I just got done talking to my face-to-face uh, -face trainer, David Heath. And we recruited 15 agents last month. And out of those 15, a total of 13 have made sales, which is incredible because the, the opposite of this is, is the norm where 90% plus of the agents fail out to get their license, struggle at some point where ours get through. So, and we've seen about an 80% success rate with, um, uh, the telesales side, if it, and I, if I didn't mention it was an 87%, yeah, 13 out of 15 for for uh, face to face. So that's that's very important to understand. We're definitely different from WFG in the sense that we're not about team building. I have no problem with team building. It's what I'm doing as an agency. But what we believe is you got to first get some street cred. You got to get in the field. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to have some, some success, and before you start recruiting, because like. After Gene does this for six months, 12 months, he's not going to have any problem recruiting because he's been in it. He's been uh, he's been through the ups and the downs as a final expense agent. People want to work with pros, you know, and that's that's the nature of the business. Now, Gene, I want to ask you about age leads. You mentioned you bought age leads and they didn't work. Um, why, why didn't they work for you? Uh, okay, um, so actually it was Tim that gave me the age leads, right? Um, he was like, hey, man, play around with this. All right, um, just go go ahead and try knocking on these doors. I was like, wow, oh, okay, good. Well, you know, I, I was kind of stubborn. I didn't want to like, I didn't want to buy new fresh leads. Right? I was like, ah, well, I don't know if I'm going to invest, right? Because I don't think I got a lot of um, ROIs on my first one. I'm like, eh. so the team was very nice. You know, um, he threw me to the wolves and I did what I got to do. So hundred, I think it was like more than a hundred names. But I was so happy because I was like, look, I got all these names, right? Man, I'm gonna be knocking all day, but guess what? Majority of this, um, the of these leads, 
probably, I don't know, a wrong address. Some of them, they don't live there anymore, disconnected phones. Um, some of them, one guy, he told me that he filled up this application five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I'm like, oh, whoa. <laughs> um, so it was a, li a little bit overwhelming. And I knew um, it wasn't a right thing to do. Um, and that's what, like I said, um, I think February 28th, and when I bought my second orders of lead. Um, and with that, okay, do you want me to keep going, David? No, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, oh, that? Your camera's frozen again, just to throw that out there. I'll, I'll kind of talk here while you fix it. There you go. Um, yeah, the age leads, guys. This is something that yeah, yeah. I think as new agents, you guys need to hear this. Um, there are a lot of organizations that say a lead is a lead is a lead, that there's no difference between a lead that's brand new, they just requested the information versus a lead that's five to 10 years old. That's hogwash. It's not true. It's not that you can't make sales off of age leads. It's just that why would you want to when you have access to the fresh and exclusive leads that, in my opinion, give you the highest odds chance of success? I'd rather sit down with a prospect that just requested the information online or by mail and see them immediately versus see them years from now, because the odds are just higher. They're more in the market to buy. And, and the thing I tell agents all the time is what we've got to watch about cutting corners too quickly. If you've gotten great training, if you think training is important, you think the carrier selection is important, you, you, you think, all of that's important, but then you don't think that leads are important. You're leaving out a critical piece of the pie that okay. is going to have an immediate impact on your level of success. So my advice and what we do with all of our agents, whether they're in our free lead program or whether they're buying their own leads, we get them fresh leads. It makes that much of a difference. And I just find that, again, if we want to have the high success rate, Get the best across all classes. You want to get the best training, the best support, the best carriers, and the best leads. So um, otherwise, you'll have this experience, which can be completely demoralizing if you're a new agent, where you're just like, these people are dead. They just bought. They moved. And you're just out there knocking on doors thinking, is there actually any reality or, or capability to be successful in this business? It's, it's just it's a frustrating thing you want to try to avoid if you can. So... Um, Gene, so you worked through the age leads. Did you get back on fresh leads then? Yeah. Um, so after two weeks of playing around with it, um, it was, I felt very, um, like I lost all my hope, you know, yeah. it's terrible, um, terrible. But uh, I got back um, my first, my second order of leads, I think on Gen uh, February 27th. Okay. That was uh, two weeks ago, right? Two weeks ago. Uh, it was a TPC. I think I ordered like what 20, 20, I think it was like 25, but they gave me like four because of the replacement leads from the last time. So it was like a 29. Out of that 29, I think I was able to solve three policies. Good. Okay, um, resulting to 3,680. I think it was a good, good, you know, good return. I paid for 700 bucks, I got three thousand dollars back, right. So what I did was that I bought another one um, the following week, which is like um, towards the end of that. And then I got, I got it from March 5. March 5, this is last week. I was able to sell four policies, resulting to um, 3,778 AP. Excellent. So now, you know, like now I'm seeing it, I'm like, and, and this is while me doing, you know, my other, you know, my other working sure. with my other company, right? So. I don't, I, this is what I love about this, David. This is what I appreciate with this company, right? With, with, your, with your agencies that you allow people like me, you know, to work here part-time, to have access and, you know, learn about the beauty, the world of final expenses, because that's something that I've been looking forward to do for so many long time. You know, I, I know I can sell IULs, um, annuities and different types, but Sometimes I would have clients that are not able to qualify for an IUL. So that's just a lost sale. Right. So with me here, you know, I have different types of careers that I can provide and actually help the family out because that's what I believe. You, you know, we got to help these people become properly protected. Right. Right. 
And that's good too. I mean, all of this business you've done part-time, you know, while you pursue your other avenues. Again, a, a great thing about selling final expense, at least with us, we accept part-timers. You got to take it seriously like Gene does. You got to buy the leads. You got to run the appointments. Even though you're on a part-time schedule, you got to be on a full-time, you have to have a full-time mentality. You have to take it seriously. And um, plenty of opportunity out there if you just go work, guys. It's, it's, it's a great business. That's what makes it nice. So, uh, uh, David, I'm uh, sorry yeah. to cut you off, bro. I just want to share a little bit my activities because to kind of like yeah. tell on a part-time perspective. Sure. Um, you know, because of course, if I have a if I if I have an opportunity for a presentation to recruit someone, you know, you know me, man, I would I would, I would you know I would go on that appointment instead, right? But um, ever since I bought the the my second order of leads, um, I kind of got inspired of how. Um, Tim and my sister-in-law was doing the business, okay? Because I heard uh, my sister-in-law uh, making the calls, and I'm like, "Hey, my girlfriend ain't doing nothing." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Hey, yeah, hey, you know, you you want uh, you want some uh, you want some dinner, right? Come on, you know, you gotta make this call." And fortunately enough, she used to work for Geico for like a year and a half. Oh, good. So she didn't she didn't have a problem making calls. So I would knock five to six hours a day um at least one appointment a day if she set it up um my 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 goal is to hit at least two presentations so my time i would start from 12 to usually 6 or 12 to 5 okay. that if i don't have 12 to 5 uh 12 p.m to 5 p.m if i don't have any other appointments um but um yeah, basically that's about it. But uh, the more, I think what's important if you have someone to set up an appointment for you, because I feel like most of the policies that I, that I sold is a result of my girlfriend, my partner actually setting up the appointment mm. because they're actually wow. expecting you. Right, right, 100%. Yeah, you know, for us, one of the things we're incorporating um, our face-to-face -face trainer, David uh, Heath, Sorry if I'm talking over your little lag there, Jane. Uh, we're starting to do more appointment setting for our agents that join our agency. And we've definitely noticed the same thing. Uh, there's something about having some preset appointments that makes the difference. Uh, if you wake up and you've got two, three or four appointments set, you know you're going to be making some money. You know, it's a very motivating thing. So the last thing I want to I want to talk to you about is I saw on your weekly wins board post that you sold somebody that you couldn't find the address for or a phone number for. You went into a rehab facility. Uh, what What is that about? I, I'm so intrigued. How did you make that sale? And, you know, and tell the story, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, I think it was a couple of days ago. Last, last week. Um, well, you know, during my, my making my rounds, my goal was to at least knock on five to six doors. So I just put the address and went over there and, you know, I was with my girlfriend and it was like, hey, babe, um, this is not a house. You know, I think this is a rehabilitation facility. I'm like, what, what the hell is that? I don't know. Go find, go find out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in there. Okay. So basically it's a hospice, you know, a hospice. I don't know how to pronounce it, but basically people were dying, right? So I went to the front desk. Um, I asked for the name. They couldn't find her. And I, I was like, okay, well, she requested this information. Can you can you actually try to find her on your database? So she did. It took her about, what, three to five minutes. And she asked me what I'm here for because they don't really allow guests. So I showed her the, the thing on my phone, like the door knocker thing. It's like, hey, um, I was trying to call her. We have an appointment. Well, we didn't really have an appointment. But... It says over here that she's supposed to expect an agent within 24 to 72 hours. So I need to find her because I have something for her that she requested. So she eventually gave me the room uh, room number. And when I saw her there, well, she was on the wheelchair. Um, she couldn't even walk. Um, and she said her phone is disconnected because, you know, her, her daughter is keeping track of her stuff like that. Um, her, if she can even access her email. Um, I don't know. She wasn't just expecting for me to actually go there, but I did, um, and I was able to help her out. Good, yeah. And and I I mentioned that Jane because you know 
sometimes the difference between being successful and not in this business is not about knowing like 10 times as much more information. It's about taking what you know and doing that one extra step or two that the other guy won't do. Like most agents probably wouldn't have bothered with even going to the front desk to ask because they're immediately like, oh, not a prospect, not going to work. But the thing is those decisions, those little micro decisions that you make to do the thing and go the extra mile, the extra inch even really, or not, they start to add up. And then weeks turn into months and the agents that do those little extra things over time every day, far outstrip earning power than the ones who just won't get out of their comfort zone, even just a little bit to go that extra step. And that's why I commend you, Gene. Uh, congratulations on that. Also, one thing about Gene that's really good. He sent me his call very early on. Uh, we listened to a sales presentation it was phenomenal. He's excellent. He follows the script. He practices it. All of these are important traits to have in success with really anything, especially a, a performance-based business like final expense sales. So, um, Gene, that's it, man. I know you're out there busy working. I appreciate yes. you being on here, and thank you for sharing your story. Um, yeah, David, just one thing before I let you guys go. I think this might sound bad. Well, not really bad. It might sound odd, but I think... Um, Practice makes really difference, you know. Um, I think practicing on the mirror um, while driving in the car, you know, um, any way you can. Practicing um, objections, handling objections and rebuttals. I think it plays a major role when it comes to this game, right? Because you have to be prepared, you know, before the war begins, right? So, right. Um, David, if you can give me like thirty seconds. Um, I kind of want to see, I just want to show you a little bit, um, like a graph um, yeah. that I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Here's the thing. I'm going to just uh, do my camera here. Number one is like, I think this is based on your, your. Um, I'm just following based on what you taught me, in this, especially in this classroom. Um, I think sharing is important, right? Report. Um, the first three to five minutes is really important, you know, um, and kind of like share it to the client. While you're there, you know, like the most most of the most of the time, people request this information because they are worried about funeral costs and stuff like that. And then second, um, know your client. Um, this is, I think, where it comes to fact finding um, all the all the hard questions, right, David? You know, um, what would happen if you know if you pass today and you don't, you don't have any policy. How would you? How would your children take it if you found if they found out it was all on them, right? All that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Fact finding, and then I think the third one is know your solution, right? I mean, we got level, graded, and then um, the GI kind of just like know what you're what you're gonna offer them ahead of time. Different options. I think you 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 taught us how to give three different options, three different prices, right? All of that, and last but not the least, is just really closing it. You know, um, this is it. Doesn't matter if you have all these three, but if you can't close it, if you're not ready to, you know, handle objections and be aggressive enough to handle rebuttals, um, you know, like social security, bank information, you know, like all of that, um, it's gonna be tough for you, right? So you gotta master all the rebuttals, and I think this is where. The practice and rehearsal comes into play. Um, you know, have your have your best friend or your wife or your girlfriend, you know, um, practice on you. You know, at, let them question, answer any questions, hard, difficult questions. You know, and I think with that, if you're able to do all of this, um, I think myself at least, David, I will be able to make at least 10k, 10k a week here, cash flow. Um, Part time, yeah, bro. And just say, <laughs> thank you so much, guys, for giving me the opportunity to be here today. You guys are amazing. God bless Gene, you. Gene, thank you. Thank you very much, man. Thanks for spending time with us. Uh, we appreciate you.